Next question is about the fruit. The edible part of this fruit is dash and its name is dash. So, two things are there. One is you have to find out what is the name of the fruit. Next is which part of this fruit is edible, right? So, two things you have to match. Actually, this is the other level of questioning. Not only one is asked, you are going to match the things. So, if you know the types of fruits, like broadly how we are classifying them as starting fruits are classified into simple fruits, then aggregate fruits and the composite fruits. What are simple fruits? One fruit develops from one flower, it is a simple fruit. Then aggregate fruits, a single flower having multiple multicarpillary apocarpus ovary produce the bunch of fruits that is called aggregate fruits. Composite fruits, number of flowers producing a single fruit like one whole inflorescence producing one fruit, one whole inflorescence is there like the psychonus fruit, like sorosis fruit, they developed from one complete inflorescence, they come under composite fruits. Now, if you know simple fruits, again in that we have divisions, fleshy fruits and dry fruits. Fleshy fruits are those in which the pericarp, that is the fruit wall, any part is edible in that, it becomes fleshy and thick and it is edible. Whereas dry fruits, the pericarp or the fruit wall is dry and not edible. Therefore, in dry fruits normally the seeds are edible, in fleshy fruits the fruit wall is edible. So, in this diagram given, we can observe the diagram, you can very easily make out it is a fruit belonging to citrus family, it may be an orange or it may be a lemon, right. Here I have given, there is a give, uh, things are given as first number option 1 is 1 is given here, this is the second, this is the third part, the white part, then the fourth part is at the middle at the center. Right? So, when you observe the fruit regularly in orange, the outer part will be oily having oil glands, it is called the epicarp, then comes a mesocarp, then comes a endocarp. So, the options given here are 4 as usual, A option given is epicarp number 2, it is pipo. So, epicarp is this, epicarp number 2 is not pipo. Right? Epicarp is actually this, he, they say that number 2 is epicarp, number 2 is not epicarp, this is actually mesocarp. Therefore, it is wrong option, at the beginning only it is 2 into is equal to epicarp is wrong. But what they are given is pipo, so what is pipo then? Pipo fruit is found in all cucumber and cucurbits. What is pipo? It develops from an inferior ovary where the ovary is having tricarpillary syncarpus, but unilocular ovary, but develops from inferior ovary and their ovules are arranged on the parietal placentation. Therefore, that does not match it at all here. So, pipo fruit also can be asked as a separate question, what is pipo? It develops from tricarpillary inferior ovary, but unilocular ovary, where the ovules are arranged on the parietal placentation, they are in the periphery. Therefore, all cucumber and cucurbit they will have the seeds all over that is attached to the periphery right. Therefore, this is not right, but anyway that can be a separate question. Second given is the third that is mesocarp is third part right, third part they said it is mesocarp right, this is a mesocarp and they call it as the droop. But here this is epicarp, this is mesocarp, mesocarp is matching for the third option, but it is not a droop fruit. What is droop then? Droop is a fruit in which epicarp is slightly leathery, sometimes it is edible as in mango, then mesocarp is thick and fleshy and it is edible, juicy also, endocarp is thin and peppery, right. Droop of mango, if you observe only mesocarp, epicarp and endocarp, all the three things are edible. But here this is not a droop because this is a different fruit as I told you it is lemon or citrus family fruit. Therefore, second option is the wrong answer. Then third option given is endocarp number 2. So, this is endocarp number 2 they have given it. These two things are matching because this is epicarp, the white part is a mesocarp, this must be the endocarp. So, endocarp number 2 is matching and they call it as Hesperidium. So, that must be a right answer because Hesperidium is a fruit found in all citrus families. Here, what happens? Epicarp is leathery, mesocarp is papery, thin, form the false locules like this, you know, room like things. They are formed by the mesocarp and endocarp is drawn into the hair like sacs filled with juice. They were called juicy 
hairs of endocarp are edible and that kind of fruit is called hesperidium that must be the right. But let me check the last one also endocarp number 4. So, fourth option endocarp is not correct because this part is the placenta in which you have the free central placentation. Remember so many things you can understand by this diagram. So, fourth option what I have given as fourth labeling is actually for the placenta. So, when you talk about the placentation we have basal placentation then marginal placentation, parietal placentation, exile placentation and the free central placentation. Free central placentation is found only in this you can see free central placentation. So, the fourth option is not endocarp it is a placenta. So, therefore, endocarp fourth hesperidium is wrong fruit is correct hesperidium, but it is not endocarp which is present here it is a placenta. Therefore, among all the four options the right option must be the endocarp in hesperidium fruit which is the second part what I have labeled this is the endocarp which is having juicy hairs that are edible. In lemon what we eat is endocarp having juicy hairs that is edible neither epicarp nor mesocarp even endocarp is not solid thing it is having juicy hairs only that is edible in the hesperidium. Therefore, the right option must be endocarp in hesperidium is edible. Moving on to the next question, it is about the floral diagram. So, there are four floral diagrams given in this. So, you are to have how to find out which of these four belong to family Solanaceae. Family Solanaceae, I hope you know it is the family of Brinjol, right. Solanaceae, we call it as a vegetable family because it is a very common one like Brinjol, potato and all of them most of them they belong to the family Solanaceae and chili, capsicum all belong to family Solanaceae. Then among the four diagrams you will have to identify which floral diagram fits for or it represents family Solanaceae. So, first before entering into it I will give you a small clue or idea how to identify the floral diagram, floral formula. What do they mean? They are actually graphical representation of a complete flower when it is observed from the top, right. So, here one of them I will just explain you so that you will understand all other. The first whatever the square or the circle with the plus mark in it represents the axis, floral axis from where the floral members or the petals and sepals can be identified whether they are posterior or they are anterior to the, the floral axis stem axis. So, this is stem axis if you consider this it is a posterior petal this is the anterior petal and outermost layer of the units belong to actually the sepals or sepal arrangement. Next one comes as a petal arrangement or the corolla arrangement then comes the andracium, then comes the gynaecium. So, this is how you have to analyze. So, in this diagram you can see so many things one is estivation you can make out even you can make out the placentation. Estivation you can see in the first diagram A there are four sepals and there are four petals they are arranged side by side without overlapping. So, such estivation is said to be valvate estivation you all know because that can also be a question where they will give estivations and identify what type of estivation is this. So, in this you can cover whole thing estivation you can cover placentation you can cover even you can explain the arrangement of all these members in a floral diagram. Then here sepals are 4 petals are 4 therefore, it is the it must be a tetramerous flower right and it has the separated units they are not combined with each other therefore, it is a polysepalous and polypetalous condition and the arrangement is valvate estivation is valvate. Then coming to the next horal this is about the andracium the stamens are 4 you can make out 4 anthers are there and each one is a dithecus anther you can make out each one having 2 units one anther lobe and the another anther lobe there are 2 anther lobes therefore, we call it as a dithecus anther and the anthers are facing towards the center 
this is called the intros condition see in each of these words a question can be framed so what is the dithika center what is intros condition and what is the tetramerous flower what is valvate distribution like that many things you can cover in one question then coming to this this is a gynoecium the ovary structure are given a bicarpellary syncarpus ovary two carpels are there they are fused and the ovules are arranged to the axis this called the exile placentation so the complete analysis of this floral diagram should be sepals four and valvate estivation and their polysepals petals four they are free that means they are polypetalous and they are on valvate estivation then stamens are four they are dithicus and they are free they are facing the center that is they are in intros condition then gynoecium ovary is bicarpellary syncarpus and having ovules arranged on the exile placentation that is the explanation for this and this actually belong to family brassicaceae actually it is like brassica gensia belong to this therefore this is not representing solanaceae next option given here is this one b option where we have 1 2 3 4 5 5 sepals are there and the brackets indicate they are fused that means they are gamosepalous sepals are fused and they are again side by side without overlapping therefore they show valvate estivation then come to the petals 1 2 3 4 5 petals are there and these petals are showing one edge attached to the next edge one edge is overlapping the next half of it this we call it as a twisted estivation one in half in half out half in and out in and out we call it as a twisted estivation or contorted estivation then they are all fused you can see the petals are fused we call it as a gamopetalous condition and the arrangement is the twisted estivation then come to the anther stamens 1 2 3 4 5 five stamens are there and these stamens are attached to the petals you can see the diagram showing petal attachment this we call it as the epipetaly epipetaly refers to attachment of the anthers or stamens to the petals therefore it is showing epipetalous condition five anthers so this must be a pentamerous flower and it should be an actinomorphic flower also because it is having almost same but one separate thing i want to tell you here it is not an actinomorphic flower but the previous one you can make out it is actinomorphic because all the members are clear it can be cut into equal halves but here it is not so because the gynoecium see the gynoecium it is obliquely placed you can see it's obliquely placed and along with that there is it's only bicarpellary syncarpus ovary with ovules arranged on exile placentation because of the presence of obliquely placed placenta it becomes a zygomorphic flower so the axis is shown here this is the axis this is the position of the ovary which is obliquely placed so this is actually the floral diagram of family solanaceae so that must be the right answer but before going to that let me explain the other two also that can also be a special question for you because floral diagram and formula most of the students will be worried what it is but it's so simple right having very smaller things you understand any floral diagram any floral formula formula is not at all a issue for you next floral diagram given in c it is having so many around 10 bracts actually 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 bracts are there we call it as a involucre of bracts or we call it as a epicalyx in this then comes the calyx calyx are actually sepals are five right these sepals are five like this and petals show in and out arrangement actually this is in and out arrangement right and they are attached to each other so this is the petal then come to the andrasium stamens are many you can make out stamens are so many i have drawn and all the stamens are present on a single bundle they are found in a bundle right we call this as monoadelphy monoadelphous condition but stamens are monothecous you can make out one single single anther lobes they are called the monothecous anthers just a minute here calyx is given so calyx is here corolla is internally i am giving you the calyx just now i just drew it this is calyx corolla is showing in and out arrangement this twisted estivation right then the andrasium is showing the 
many anthers they are all facing outside they are extrose anthers they form monoidal phi then comes a gynaecium having five carpels pentacarpellary syncarpus ovary so this is a typical floral diagram of family malvesi it is hibiscus rosa sinensis then the gynaecium is normal five pentacarpellary syncarpus and it is a typical actinomorphic flower therefore malvesi family show this kind of floral diagram then last one i am showing here a different floral diagram you can make out here 1 2 3 4 5 sepals are showed they are all free that is normally the characteristic of valvate estimation coming to corolla you can see the different type of petal arrangement there is one posterior petal outermost two are side petals they are showing in and out condition two are fused right this is forming the boat shaped structure so this you would have got right now it belong to papillinaceous corolla where you get one big standard petal outermost posterior one two side petals called wing petals and two keel petals are fused so this is very important for you if you consider the arrangement also we call it as imbricate estivation it is called descending imbricate estivation or we call this also as auxiliary estivation right this can also be asked as a separate question and they may ask you to identify the technical terms in this diagram the technical terms are petal arrangement is very technical here or very different it is having one standard petal two wing petals two keel petals showing descending imbricate estivation or vexillary estivation one more thing is here the anthers are 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 among 10 9 are fused see the fusion i showed you here then one is free this is 9 plus 1 arrangement 9 fused one is free this arrangement is called diadelphy then coming to the gynaecium here monocarpillary syncarpus ovary where ovule is arranged on the marginal placentation therefore the whole thing belong to family papillionaceae or fabaceae right all the pea and beans you would have seen batani matte avarekai who he gets the other floral diagram but he can't the other now familiar with the flower in the floral diagram and you practice madidre then it becomes very simple for you this belong to family papillionaceae earlier they used to call it as papillionaceae now we call it as fabaceae so the under family leguminosae we have three sub families one of them is fabaceae next is mimosaceae then cisalpinaceae there are three this is fabaceae it was earlier called as papillionaceae so among the all the four the right answer must be only b option because of the question otherwise also all are separately asked questions so concentrate on these diagrams you just note down these diagrams so that any time anyone asked with any technical explanation you can give easily so it becomes very simple when you understand every smaller unit of that not by learning just like that by hearting it is the way to understand every subject with small small details therefore in this diagram very simple answer you can also identify now it is b option which is belonging to family solanaceae but it is a zygomorphic flower